we don't want to say thank you. Why? Because we're going through so many hard times. But today this message is a reminder that in times like these we need to say thank you Jesus. And the reason being is because many of us we go through things in life sometimes the things that we see and things that we can't see should allow us to say thank you God for another day of life for another time where we can actually walk there are many of us who walk here to church this morning and because we were able to walk here we should give God thanks so on that note I'm gonna ask if we can please bow our heads today and we'll pray together father in heaven in the stillness of this hour and this short message, O oh God, may it impact our lives to know that we need to say thank you each and every day of our lives. As we sit here this morning and speak to your people, may it be one that will impact our lives in such a way that when we leave here, we will never be the same again. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you know, our scripture reading, I'm not even going to go back and read it once again because the message is so short this morning. But we all talked about the lepers. We know the situation about leprosy and Jesus is going towards Jerusalem and he's passing through Samaria and all of that. And then he gets to a point where he hears master. It's a group of men, 10 men who are standing by the side. They're in a colony because every time they approach people, they're supposed to say unclean, unclean because of their condition. And now he gets to this part where he is, he's, he's stuck now. Jesus stops because he hears the cries of people. And that's the moment that I've come to share with you this morning. And we've come to share that because in spite of what we're going through in our life, when we cry out to God, know that he hears us and he draws near to us. But when he draws near and he protects us and he gives us that special protection that only he can give, we have got to come back to him and say thank you. The problem in the text is that we heard that the ten lepers were healed. In fact, he goes to them and he says, go show yourself to the priest. They, while they were walking to go to the priest, they were healed on the way. It was a matter of faith because they knew they called him master. Now, when I looked up the word in the Greek, that word master is not like son of God. It's not a messianic term. It is simply like a healer. So the, 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 these, these lepers knew him as a healer. They knew the place that they can receive healing, but they didn't know him as savior. And many times we come to church similarly, and we know it's a place that we can find healing where Jesus is, but we don't know him as our savior. And this morning the challenge is that we must take time in our busy lives to get to know Jesus as Savior and as Lord and not simply as somebody who can heal us, somebody who could just step in almost like a genie in the bottle that we rub the right way and all of a sudden, all of a sudden we receive what we're supposed to get, all that stuff and we go on our merry way without ever turning back to say thank you. And this morning Eglinton is here with me because we're, we're getting a little bit closer to our, our Thanksgiving time. And we, want to, we sometimes go through things in life where we don't realize that God's protection is over us. Many of us are here today because God has protected us. God has been by our side. And the truth is that if, if God has not been protecting us, some of us would be in places we never anticipated right now. If God's hand of mercy has not been upon us, many of us probably would have been six feet under. And we come to church without ever giving God praise. And I'm thankful this morning that Eggy is here. Uh, many of you know Eglinton, right? Eglinton Rios is a member here at this church, a young man, but one who has a very powerful testimony this week of God's protection over his life. And so this morning, Eggy, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, can you all on this side see Eggy? Eggy, let's move out a little bit because they want to be able to see you. They don't really care about seeing me, but they want to at least see you. Um, and I want to, I want to ask you, Eggy, um, if you would, if you wouldn't mind, uh, tell us, tell us a little bit about your week. How was your week? Um. Well, I'm thankful for my week that I am still alive here, so I can tell uh, all of you about my testimony of this week. And um, 
your, your testimony this week. You, you're, you're just so thankful that you're alive. I hear that. Um, so what happened? Many of you do want to know, don't you? What happened, Eggy? Well, all right. it started on uh, Thursday after school, and um, I was walking. I was walking home from school, and I knew that my mom would call me just to say where I was and to be safe. And so I decided to start speed walking towards my house, and I came beyond um, a bus stop. And the bus stop was so crowded, and everyone was just in one pile, and I started saying, excuse me, excuse me, and then I came on to one point, and I saw this old man with his walker. Uh, I said, excuse me, and then he's like, it's okay, son. And he laughed, and he moved out of the way. And I laughed, and I said, thank you very much. And, um, and no, no, just, just take your time. I know that this is um, a kind of hard, right? Um, Go ahead. And um, I laugh and uh, I keep on walking and then five seconds later um, a car, a car hit um, the old man. Um, I know many of you probably heard the incident on the news. Um, there is a gentleman that was hit in Kitchener this week um, and died. So as I was walking, I turn around and I see, and I see the car. He, he, hit a, he hit a mailbox and then he also hit the old man and then I turn around and I see blood gushing from his head. And then Everyone just starts piling up, and then they call 911, and then my friend from the distance looks, uh, starts running to me, and then he told me that. He's like, if I was there five seconds earlier, I would have died too. And these are the moments that uh, we reflect on. And sometimes we don't really comprehend that uh, that God's protection really is upon us. A few moments earlier, he spoke to the gentleman. And by the time he crossed the street, five seconds later, the car jumped the curb, took out some, some items, and hit into this, this older gentleman, uh, running over him and uh, killing him. And I think about Eggy here, who is a part of this congregation, who for that moment in time, God was able just to allow for him to move onward and allow for this car to miss him. And it could have been a very different situation this morning. And I know that many of us look at that, it's not by coincidence, but God's hand is over his people. We're saddened at the fact that this gentleman lost his life. And we have these ambivalent feelings because we are saddened at the fact that this gentleman was killed in this tragic accident. We're also happy that we do have Eggy here to be able to say how powerful God is to protect him. And on this Thanksgiving Sabbath, when we reflect on the moments that God's hand of protection has been over us, we have much to give God praise for and thanks for. And we cannot leave this place Sabbath after Sabbath without ever reflecting on the fact that truly God has been there. I know many of us are going through some trying times. Many of us probably lost homes and lost all types of stuff in our lives, lost money. But all those things are just trivial. Money comes and money goes as someone says. A house could come and a house can go. But when you have life, someone said you have hope. 
And this morning I want to ask for our congregation to reflect on the many ways that God has blessed us. If you're able to stand, God has blessed you. If you're able to run, God has blessed you. If you can't run but you can walk, God has blessed you. If you can't walk but you can crawl, God has blessed you. If you cannot crawl, someone said even this week, but you have somebody to carry you, God has blessed you. And we at times need to take stock in our own lives of how blessed we are as a people. And Eggy, I'm just so happy. Many times I turn and I say to each one of you, I am happy to see you, but you don't know what I mean. I'm happy to see you six feet above ground. I'm happy to see you here, being able to walk, being able to breathe without a ventilator, being able to speak, being able to comprehend, being able to laugh, being able to even cry. Because those are the things we need to reflect on and give God praise for. Because we don't know how much we have until we begin to lose little that we do. This morning, I know the message is very short and very touching, but it's simply this. Give God praise. Give God thanks for the things that we have, the things that we don't have, and those that we have in our lives to share these moments. Someone told me something very tragic a little while ago. It was over 20 years they did not speak to a family member. And I pondered on that. How can someone not speak to someone over 20 years? Very dear to me. And the only reason is because they had some things in their heart. But when I reflect on the fact that God has blessed us so much, there are times we need to go and make things right. Because time is just so short. Life is just so short that we don't have time to fool around and to hold grudges and hold animosity. This is the time, Thanksgiving time, where we reflect on the goodness of God, on the goodness of God to our own lives, where we praise God for the things that he has done for us throughout the many years of life on this planet. And if we do have issues in our lives that needs to be resolved, we resolve them. Because we don't know when that day will come that we will not be given another opportunity to speak to the person. Take advantage of the time that we do have and praise God because of it. Can we please bow our heads for prayer? Father in heaven, Lord, I'm just so thankful today for the testimony that Eggy has shared and for you preserving his life and allowing him to be here to be able to testify of how good you have been to him. I ask as a congregation, O oh God, that we'll also be mindful to praise you and glorify you in times like these. And Lord, let us make things right with each other so that we will continue to live as a family that is united, that is bound by your love. Bless each person today under the sound of my voice. And at the end of today, O oh God, as we celebrate more in potluck, may we continue to share and fellowship with one another and show that love that you have given to us this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us stand together.